Thank you, Lord. We're thankful for those that are here with us in this congregation today and those that are watching online. Thank you for supporting the service like you do. And if you just want to continue to support our service, you know, you can always visit our website, changechristiancenter.org, and just donate whatever, whatever's on your heart. If you want to donate, if you need prayer, we just yes, ask that you Lord. utilize that website. Thank you, Jesus. Reach out to the pastor or first lady at any time. Just whatever you need, you can follow us on social media, Facebook, YouTube, at Change Christian Center. And we just thank you. Thank for you, the support. Lord. And we just thank you, God. Thank Jesus' you. name. Thank you, God. At this time, we're going to bring up Pastor Les with our word. And we just ask that you just encourage him, give him a hand clap as he comes up. I know he has a word for us. Amen. Amen. God bless you all this morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being in the presence of the Lord. Um, you know, what an honor it is to be in his presence. Uh, when you think about you singing a song, you're saying being in the presence of the Lord. And it's a great when you sing that song, but when you really think about it, you're saying that you're in the presence of God. You know, that, that, that should resonate. You know, I'm in the presence of God. And when you think about that, you think about, you know, he has no beginning. He has no ending. So um, it's not somebody that appeared. He was always here. And this is the person that we're talking about. He has no beginning, has no ending. He spoke the world was created. I mean, everything that he do, he do it with perfection. And, and what we're saying is we're in that person's presence. We're in his presence. So when you say that, it's a humbling experience uh, to be in his presence and to feel his presence. And, and so I don't take it for granted. I know you don't either. I just appreciate the Lord every single day. Um, we are here not because of anything. We say this often that we said or anything that we've done. We're here because his grace is sufficient. And so we just thank the Lord this morning. Thank you for being here, whether you're here uh, locally or you're online. I know um, yesterday we had a, uh, the sun was out and man, I was in a short sleeve shirt and I was just enjoying life. I woke up this morning, it was raining, the wind was blowing and, and I was freezing. I was like, wow. So I know that, you know, some of the rain probably was a hindrance and, and we understand that. So we Ask the Lord to wherever you're at today to bless you. Uh, we're going to read out the book of Jeremiah chapter 18. I, I was uh, in my study in the morning and uh, I was doing my devotion and I felt like God began to deal with me about Sunday. So uh, I transitioned to this and I feel that this is what God want me to give you this morning. Out of the book of Jeremiah chapter 18 verses 1 through 6. Jeremiah 18 verses 1 through 6. The Bible says the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Saying, arise, remember that, arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work on the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, verse 6, O hear, O Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in mine, O house of Israel. So this morning for a topic, I entitled this, The Crack in the Pot. The Crack in the Pot. So you've heard me say this before. Uh, the word arise, if you go to this particular verse and you look at the word arise, you look at it in the original Hebrew, it means to accomplish, to raise up or to lift up again. So when I was reading that, I thought in order for you to lift up again, that means you must have been up before. 
and presently you're in a down position. So in order to 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 lift up again, that means I was up before, but I'm not up right now. I'm in a down position. So the Bible says, uh, along with that, that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. I want you to listen to that. It said the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. That for it found him where he was presently at, because if it came to him, then he, wherever he was at, the word came to him. So in his present location or his present situation, the word came to him. So sometimes people will underestimate the Lord, myself included. We will assume that because we are presently in a down position that we cannot hear from the Lord. All right. But I want to tell us this morning that the word of the Lord will find you wherever life takes you. All right. It could take you as far north, south, east or west. It could take you up. It could take you down. It could take you, like Paul said, to the third heaven. It could life can take you in any different direction. But wherever life takes you, the Lord is able to find you. His word is able to find you. All right. So it came to Jeremiah right where he was at the word of the lord because it came to him and because it can do that it tells us that his word is revelatory always it's always revelatory and every time you read the word or every time that you hear the word it brings fresh perspective it brings a fresh anointing into your life it brings a fresh fire into your soul it brings a fresh vision to your spiritual eyes so I want you to hear me this morning. I want to take a few seconds and just break down these a couple verses that we just read. Verse two said, arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause thee to hear my words. So sometime when you rise is what the scripture saying. Sometime when you rise, you have to go down in order to get fixed or healed before you come up. Right. Did you get what I just said? Sometimes it said, arise, get up and go down. And then I'm going to cause you to hear the word. So in, we, we, we rise up and we want to go straight. But the Lord sometimes don't cause us to go straight. He calls us to arise and he calls us to go down in a down position. So there he could speak to us. He can fix us. He can heal us. And then in our downtime or in our broken time is when we hear the word of the Lord. And that's when he uh, heal us or that's when he speak to us. Just because I want us to understand just because you're in a downtime or there's a crack in your foundation. It does not mean God is not talking to you. When you hear something, it's not always that you ate too much pizza. That's not it all the time. You know, you can be in a down position. You can be, but God can talk to you in that down position. I'm not so much busy when I'm down. I'm not I'm not doing so much when I'm down. So I'm more apt to hear the voice of God. So God will talk to us in our downtime. So Moses, let me give you an example. Moses was not just in the desert. All right. He was not just in the desert, but the Bible says that he was on the backside of the desert when when the word of the Lord found him and began to talk to him about what God wanted him to do. So he was just not, you, you think, well, Moses was in the desert and God spoke to him. But it's not happenstance that the word of the Lord said that he was on the backside of the desert. That's far as in the desert as you can go. It's on the backside of this. And there is where the word of the Lord found him. That's where the word of the Lord came to him. So how far you away doesn't matter. How long you've been away from God doesn't matter. His word is revelatory. His word will find you wherever you're at because whatever work God has for you, it's not going to go away. You can run, you can hide, you can do all those things, but the word of the Lord is going to find you because he has a work for you. So why? Why did the Lord not speak to uh, Moses when he was a prince in Egypt? Right. Remember, before he went to the desert, he was a prince in Egypt. Right. Why didn't God speak to him when he was a prince in Egypt? Why didn't God speak to Moses when he first left Egypt? Right. On his, when he was running away, why didn't God just stop him in his tracks and begin to speak to them then? Why did he wait 40 years to speak to Moses? 
My answer to you is sometimes the Lord would allow, uh, allow us to go to the backside of our desert. All right. He will allow us to go to the backside of our desert. He will allow a crack in our foundation. Why? Because sometimes he have to drain us out so he can pour himself in. All right. It, it, it took 40 years to get Moses to a point where God said, now I can work through you. It may not take us 40 years. It could take us four years. It could take us five. But sometimes God has to drain us out because God can't pour himself in if we're full of ourselves. So he allowed Moses to go to the desert to get to pull some things out of him, to get some things out of him so he can fill him with himself. All right. And sometimes God allows us to go to the backside of our desert. And the reason is because he wants to be all of us. He wants to be in us. And he can't he, he's not going to fight with my he's not going to fight with me to feel me. He's not going to do it. Verse four said, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. All right. That word marred, M-A-R-R-E-D. If you look it up, marred means a casualty. It means ruined. It means destroyed or waste. So it's saying that the clay was a casualty in the hand of the potter. It was it was ruined in his hand. It was destroyed. It was a waste in the hand of the potter. But here's the thing. The potter knew that the clay was marred while he was working on it. But he had a vision of what the clay could be. So he didn't cast it out and he didn't throw it away. All right. So the potter continued to rework the clay until it resembled the pottery that the potter had envisioned. You understand? So sometimes we mess up in life and people are quick to throw us away. They are quick to to just say, uh, I knew that about them already. They, they're, they're quick to say, you know. I knew they was going to mess up. They're quick to, to, to go ahead and label you already. But God, on the other hand, he know every mistake that we're going to make even before he make it. And he still doesn't throw us away. What does he do? He simply rework us until we reflect his image. All right. The potter reflected the, the pottery or the clay that was in the hand of the potter. It reflected the vision that the potter had. And so when God is working on us, he worked on us until we reflect his image because he is the one that's doing the work. So we can look to pe people. All right. Let me, let, me, let me throw this there. People will look to their left and they will look to their right and they will wonder why I cannot have what my neighbor has. But we fail to understand that we're looking at the finished product. All right. You're looking at the finished product. What we did not see is how or what had to be worked out of us and had to be reworked on the potter's wheel until it got to the point where we can re where God can reflect through us or reflect through you. They didn't see the process. They just saw the finished product. And people don't see the process of what the potter did to the clay. We walk in the store and we see the pottery and we say, man, that is beautiful. That will look good on my shelf. And we buy it and we put it up and we just, oh, man, it looks so nice. But we don't understand that that potter had to be heated. The clay had to be heated up and it had to have a crack in it. And then it was reworked again and then it was moist and then it had to be reworked again and the crack had to come out and the foundation had to be relayed we don't see the process that the pottery had to go through and people don't see the process that they go through they said those people in church they think they have it all together My Lord. and we don't think we have it all together we understand Adrian that the Lord had to work some things out of us we understand that we had a crack. We understand that the foundation was cracked, but we understand that the potter didn't throw us away because we was marred in his hand. 
Verse 6 says, O hero Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. So this is the meat of the matter right here. Just as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in the Lord's hand. But you have to allow him to make you into whatever he called you to be. All right. You and I are in the Lord's hands. We are in the Lord's hand. We may be marred. We may have to go down in order to come up, but we, he's still going to do a work in us. Even if we do go down, the good news is this, whether we are up or whether we are down, whether we are marred or whether we are cracked, we are still in his hand. He knows our future. He knows our future and he holds our tomorrow. The Bible said, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. That's what the Bible says. So greater is he. It didn't say greater is he in this perfect body or in this perfect mind. It didn't say anything. He said, greater is he that is in me as I am. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. It doesn't matter if you're marred. It doesn't matter if you if you have a crack in your life. It doesn't matter if you have a crack in your foundation. God is still great in you. He's used that crack and he will use that crack and he will rework that crack until he you reflect his image. Isaiah 61 verses 1 through 3 is one of my favorite scriptures. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Verse 3 said, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. In other words, uh, he's going to take your, he's going to take that, 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 that ash and he's going to give you beauty. He's going to take that mourning and give you joy. And he's going to take that heaviness and give you praise so that he can be glorified so we go through the things we go through so God can be glorified it's not to hurt us it's not to damage us it's not to belittle us but it's that God can get the glory he will be glorified so I want to tell us this morning, those that hear and those that may be listening or who may listen later on, there may be a crack in your pot. There may be a defect in your life. There may be a crack in your foundation, a crack in your relationship. Or there may be a crack in your dream or a crack in your vision or a crack in your aspiration. But the potter wants to put you back together again. It doesn't matter because it is a crack. What matters is the potter recognized the crack and he re worked it so he can be glorified so if you do have a crack don't worry about it the potter's going to put you back together again he may have allowed you to go down for a season but that down season is over all down season come to an end all down season or over at some time there's down but it's only for a while the Bible's always, it starts out with arise. That was the command, arise. So in order, if you're in the down season, in order for God, you have to arise. So God, he didn't, he didn't send them to receive the word. He didn't do anything until Jeremiah got up. And when he, be, when he, he arose, then he said, go down. So when you arise, then he will send you. Where he wants you to go but he's going to send you to a down you get up to go down but you don't stay down all right so you may be saying pastor you don't understand and i've heard that before i've said it before man you just don't understand but i submit to you this morning that you don't understand the word says and that's the only thing that we can uh, bank on. That's the only thing that we can stand on is the word. The Bible says this, that heaven and earth is going to pass away. So every single thing that we see driving down 85 and 65 and, and our uh, 
subdivision, whatever we see, all of that, the Bible says is going to pass away. The only thing that's going to remain is the word. That's the only thing that's going to remain is the word. So the word is the only thing we have to base anything off of. And the word says that he will give us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So if, uh, if, if, if uh, my life is in an ash or if I'm mourning this morning or I have heaviness on me, God said that he's going to switch it out. In other words, he's going to rework it. He's going to make what look marred and cracked. He's going to look, make it look brand new. Yeah. But it's only after we go down that he's going to bring us up. So if you are down, don't be heavy. It's only for a season. season. You're going to come back up. You have been marred long enough. Yes. You have been in the bushes long enough. The crack in the foundation has stunted your growth long enough. Today, the potter is going to put you back together again. That's, that's my message right there. Today, the potter is going to put you back together again. Today is the day that you arise from the marred bushes. You begin the journey to a tree of righteousness. He said that I'm going, after I give you the joy in the oil, he said, I'm going to make you a tree of righteousness. So after you're down for a while and come back up, you're going to be a tree of righteousness. You're going to be rooted and grounded in the word. You're going to know that God is with me. You're going to, your faith is going to be increased. When someone tell you that this is not going to happen, you're going to say, but God. Why? Because I, I went down before, but God brought me back up. I went, I, I was out, but God brought me back around. This happened, but God, you're going to be a but God person after you go down and come back up. You're going to be a but God person. The enemy may be speaking to you right now. Let me tell you this. And telling you that this message is not for you. He may be telling you that you have been marred too long to be healed. You've been marred too long to be delivered. You've been marred too long to be set free. This is who you are. Live with it. But I say according to the word that the devil is a liar and not only a liar he's the father of lies in other words he's the author of the lie so if he's telling you it's not going to happen you know right off the bat that it's a lie why because god uses cracked things god uses broken things and god uses broken people so if you've been cracked if you've been broken then you are a prime candidate for God to use you you are a prime candidate for God to move in your life you are a prime candidate for God to speak to you because God uses broken things you may say uh, man this sounds good pastor but you was talking about the word do you have any word to back that up of course I do of course I do Acts 27, verses 43 through 44, the Bible says that those that could swim was instructed to shore. I mean, it was instructed to swim to shore. And everyone else had to use boards and broken pieces of the ship. Now, let me give you a little backdrop on that. Paul was a prisoner on a ship bound to Rome. All right. He was in prison. He was in chains and he was a prisoner. So he they, 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 they left Tarsus, I think it is. And it was on their way to Rome and everybody loaded on the ship. And so they were they set sail for Rome when they set sail. Church, all was well. But in the middle of their journey, they encountered a storm. How many ever started to do something and all was well in the middle of it, a storm arose? And you're like, how in the world did this happen? But that's what happened to them. When the storm began to beat up against the ship, when the wind began to batter up against the ship, the ship was shattered into pieces. All right. And to survive, they had to hang on to the brokenness of what used to be a solid foundation. It was a solid ship when they started. But when the trials came and the storm came and began to beat up against them, it began to crack and fall apart. And when the ship splintered into pieces, the Bible says that some had to hold on to the broken pieces in order to swim to shore. 
So it's the broken thing that, that saved them. It was the broken pieces that saved them because without the broken pieces, they would have sunk. Sometimes the broken things in your life is what God used to save you. The broken things in your life is what God uses to rescue you. And they had to use those broken things in order to make it to shore. The journey that you're on, church, or presently on, may have started out sunny. But in the middle of your sun, it began to rain. All right. The storm came and it battered up against your life. It caused a crack in your foundation. That crack morphed into a hole. And then your foundation broke into pieces. You had to hang on to the broken pieces. And you had to hang on to the broken pieces because the potter said, hold on to the broken pieces. I'm going to use those things to save you. I'm going to use those things to make you you survive. I'm going to use those broken pieces to make you whole again. So all your experiences in life that broke you and shattered you and put a hole in you, just hang on to them. Don't get rid of them. God going to use them to put you back together again. Broken. Let me give you a definition of the word broken. Broken mean reduced to fragments. Broken means ruptured. Broken means torn. Broken means not functioning properly. Somebody may have told you that you are a fragment of who you used to be and that your life is ruptured and you may look out and see and think that it's torn apart and you know what? I'm not functioning properly because of this, but I got a word for you this morning. I want to talk to the broken people that's listening, the people that has a crack in their life, or those that others have told you that you are never amount to anything, those that have been written off and brushed aside, alienated and ostracized, neglected and hurt, abused and disrespected, talked about and mistreated and marginalized. I want to talk to those that don't fit in, that self-esteem has been trampled on, those that dreams and aspirations has been dictated by others, those that feel that your life is in shambles and your foundation has been shaken, those that has a crack or feel broken. I want to tell you, wherever you find yourself this morning, morning. God is still using cracked in things and God is still using broken things and he is still using cracked people and he's still using broken people. God wants to put you back together again. Not tomorrow, but today starting right now. I want to tell you this morning that you had a solid marriage. You had a solid job. You had a solid relationship. You had a solid financial plan, but life caused the crack. The crack widened and now the foundation is broken but God uses broken things. But God uses broken things. I want you to get it this morning. God uses broken things. God uses God uses broken things church. Let me give you a couple examples. God uses broken soil to produce crude to produce crop. God uses broken clouds to give rain. He uses broken grain to give us bread. He uses broken bread to give us strength. And he uses broken people to do great things. So if you ever been broken, if you ever been broken, God uses broken things. If you ever been broken, if you ever had a hole in your life, if your, your foundation ever been cracked, God uses broken things. People can't use it. People don't want to use it. But we're not here for people. We're here for the master's use. And God uses broken things. We have all been cracked or broken in some way. We've all been broken or cracked in some way. Don't look at the finished product and get it twisted. 
Don't look at the finished product and think people have it all together and they've always had it together. No, they've had cracks. They've had foundational issues. They had all kinds of things. Uh, but God, when they went down, God sent his word to encourage them. He sent his word to speak to them. and sent his word to tell them now is the time to arise because today is the day that I put you back together again. And so now they're standing here uh, looking like the way they look. Oh, they got it together. No, they don't got it together. I have a God that's behind me. I don't know if you ever looked at the picture. I think I said this before, but allow me to say it again. I, I, re, I don't know if you've seen the picture before, but it was a baby a cub. And that cub, he was, you see the picture from the front and the cub, he's growling. Of all these hyenas, he's growling at him. He just, you know, he's about, about as big as my, my little uh, York. He's about this tall. But he's growling at all those hyenas. And they're not doing anything. You just saw terror on their face. But when the when when the picture is widening out, you see his the, the the father lion. You see the the lion and the lioness standing behind the cub. So it wasn't that they was afraid of the cub; they was afraid of what was behind them. So people, they, they <laughs> it's not me, and it's not you. It's the God that's behind us. So when the enemy sees you and this enemy's on the run, don't think you have him on the run. It's the God behind me. He that's with me is greater than them that be with them. Greater. They that be with us is more than they that be with them. We have all been cracked or broken in some way. No matter what path you've taken, no matter where you came from in life, no matter where you started in life, no matter where you finish in life, no matter how rich you are, no matter how poor you are, at some level, all of us have been cracked or broken in our life. But there's always a but. Just like the potter didn't give up on the clay, God is not giving up on you. Don't let anybody fool you and say God has forgotten about you. Don't let anybody fool you and say God don't hear you when you cry. Don't, and I said hear you when you cry. Don't let anybody fool you that God doesn't hear you when you pray. Every tear is a memorial in heaven. Every prayer, God hears. Everything, every petition, God hears. And he collects those. And at the appointed time, while you are down, he's going to speak a rise. And at that time, he's going to put you back together again. I want to tell you that the crack in the pot is not the end. It was, it's the beginning. There was a crack, but God's going to put you back together. He's going to rework it. He's going to rework it. Just like the part of the group, God is not going to give up on you. This is the day. And I'm preparing to close with this. This is the day that he will pour you another solid foundation. The clay was marred in the hands of the potter. The Bible says, so he made it again. Let me say that again. The clay was marred in the hands of the potter. So the potter made it again. You may be marred in the hands of the potter, but God is going to make you again. And when he make you, when he finish you, you're going to reflect his image. So all over this building, or those that are online, if you have been broken, if you have been cracked, if you have been marred in the past, or you're presently broken, you're presently cracked, you're presently marred, I'm going to pray for you this morning. If you need prayer, we're going to do this every Sunday. If you need prayer, I'm not going to ask you what it is. Just lift your hands like this. God already know what it is. If you need, let me get that word out, specific prayer, we will pray for you. But I want to pray today because too many people has been marred in the hands of life and they think this is the way it is. 
This is this is just how it is. People have told you, people, so many people, that they're marred, that they're cracked, that their foundation is unstable. And they take that for face value and they live their life along that line. But I came to tell you this morning that the potter, Jesus Christ, want to put each and every one of us back together again. He wants to, us to reflect his image. So every broken heart, every broken dream, every broken prayer that you think have not been heard. God said, I heard your prayer. I, I, I see your tears. I hear your crying, but I haven't left you. You are in my hand. I hold your tomorrow. I hold your tomorrow. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that we are the clay, God, but you are the potter. You know everything that we go through. You know every broken heart. You know every broken situation. God, you know our prayers. Uh, Lord, that we pray in the midnight hour when no one else is around, oh God. You see the tears that stream down our face, oh God. Lord, we're in the midst of calamity, oh God. You see the foundation, the crack that's in it, oh God. You see those things, oh God. But because you're the potter and we're the clay, because you hold out tomorrow and you hold out future. God, you're going to rework it, oh God. Lord, you're going to do a new thing. Uh. Lord, you're going to start all over again, oh God. Lord, that the finish uh, will be greater than what was it started in the beginning. God, in the name of Jesus right now, every person that's listening, Lord, every person that will listen, I pray, Lord, that you begin to move in their life. I pray you begin to move in every situation. God, I pray you begin to manifest yourself. I pray, God, that you begin to do a new thing, oh God. Lord, we've all been broken. we all been shattered. All our foundations have been un been shaken, oh God. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, that you do a new thing in each and every one of our lives. Uh, God, even if we have to go down, oh God, arise up out of our situation, oh God. Uh, Lord, put us on a solid foundation. Lord, on straight street, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, if I'm in your way, from blessing me. If I'm in your way, from blessing my family. If I'm in your way, from blessing this church. If I'm in your way, oh God. If there's sin, God forgive me right now. Start with me, oh God. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me, God. I pray, Lord, that you go out, Lord, to each and every person that called Change Christian Center home. Every single person, Lord, that listening to this broadcast. Every single person, oh God, that's been marred, that's been broken broken, oh God. And I pray Jesus that you fill them up again, oh God. Let them seep out, oh God, that they may feel that you may fill them with you. In the mighty, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, I thank you right now. I thank you, Jesus, for being our potter. I thank you, Jesus, for never leaving us. I thank you for never forsaking us. I thank you, Jesus, for knowing right where we're at, oh God. I thank you for at the appointed time and at the appointed season, you always speak a right now word. Arise and go down so that you can come up. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you right now, God. I bless you right now as the praise team comes. Lord, I give you glory, God. I give you honor, God. I magnify your sweet name, Jesus. I thank you in advance for every prayer that's answered, oh God. Every life that's changed, oh God. Every marriage that's strengthened, oh God. Every financial situation that's been handled, oh God. Lord, every diagnosis and prognosis, prognosis, oh God. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you finish in us, oh God, to make us into that tree of righteousness. Lord, that you will be glorified glorified, that you will get the honor, God, and that you will get the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, praise team. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Right where we at, why don't we just lift up the Lord right now. Wherever you're at or you're in home, I want you to pray right now. I want you to lift up your hands and worship the Lord right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. We're all